sometimes I feel like I don't belong anywhere. It's like I'm homesick, even though I've never lived anywhere other than home. I think for those of us who have spent our entire lives in a small, quiet, nothing really goes on here type of town can relate when I say, I've always talked about getting out of here. The day I'd pack up my bags and move to the big city. Bye, Milo. And over the years, this little town, these streets, the people have felt a little suffocating. The memories are a little too loud. Like this place is filled with all the people that have broken my heart multiple times. It's home, diversions of me I'm rather not fond of. Filled with sad days and lonely nights and happy memories with friends that are strangers again. Every road, every grocery store and building on campus reminds me of a past or a person or a feeling. I couldn't outrun even if I tried. Nothing sounds more liberating than a blank slate. Moving away and starting over again in a place where no one knows me and I'm free to be whoever the heck I want to be. But now that I'm doing exactly that, how does one move on from the place that made them who they are? The place where I learned the alphabet and how to ride a bike without training wheels. I still park my car in the lot my parents taught me how to drive. The place that is home to all my firsts. My first chocolate chip cookie. My first day of school. It's where I uploaded my first YouTube video. It's where I've healed and learned and created and did Chinese cultural dancing and grew up and became me. So as much as I want to leave, it's much harder than I thought it would be. Sometimes doing what's right doesn't feel as good as it is good for you. Growing up, I think home was always just where my family was, but as I grew older and life happened, my family kind of scattered all over the world and so did my home. My home became the corner seat of my best friend's couch, wrapped in my favorite blanket at the end of a long day, my mom's little cubicle at her office. Home were the meals that comforted my soul. Home was in the arms of my favorite human, which meant it felt like I lost my home a couple times too. I think home is very much a feeling rather than a place, and in my case, the remedy for my homesickness is actually packing up and leaving home. We're going to Singapore. I don't know how I feel right now. Nervous, excited. Already homesick. I can't wait to see how the adventure unfolds. I'm also excited for the airplane food. I think I'm sitting in the very back of the plane. Basically, the story goes, a couple months ago my dad retired and started a new job in a new country, which means nothing is anchoring us to stay in this town I grew up in anymore. And I'm also spending my last semester of college abroad, which means I'm living on my own for the first time without my mother, my best friend by my side, and I don't know if or when I'm coming back because there really is not much for me to come back to, other than to, you know, grab our dog. But you know, it won't be the same because it just won't be home anymore. Thank you for flying Singapore Airlines, a member of Star Alliance. I think I'm feeling a new mall, which is a word I learned the other day. It's the bittersweet feeling of realizing that a certain period of your life is coming to an end. For the next four months. Walk into the door. Storage space. I believe this is more storage space. A little counter kitchen. It's a lovely little sink, shower, windows, and a little bed. We gotta go get a SIM card right now. Right now before the shop's closed. Just ran around for about an hour and a half trying to find a SIM card. Finally got one. <sighs> okay, now we can go back, shower, and unpack. When it comes to big life changes like this one, I usually find myself falling back into habits that aren't the best for me. And it's during these times I find it especially hard and therefore especially important for me to keep up with therapy sessions. Oh, baby, we should just take a break. Okay, okay, fine. You're right. 
let's uh, let's take a break. Let's because I'm going to be on Exchange okay. here for the next couple of months and we'll be traveling around a lot. I'm so grateful I use BetterHelp for therapy, who's also the sponsor of today's video. I've been using BetterHelp for almost two years now and it was actually how I got into therapy in the first place because of how easy and approachable it made therapy. I just love how BetterHelp lets you have therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even messaging. And you can schedule it at any time that's convenient for you because at the end of the day, therapy should be all about you and finding a version of it that works for you. To get started, you can just go to betterhelp.com sun where you just fill out a questionnaire and ask you questions about the challenges you're facing and what kind of therapist you're looking for and BetterHelp will then match you to one of the 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location, which will give you access to a way wider range of expertise than what's probably available to you in your city. And I have personally experienced the six month therapy waitlist, guys, and it is brutal out there. But with BetterHelp, in most cases, you'll be matched with therapists within 48 hours. And if you just don't feel that click with your therapist, you can literally switch therapists at a click of a button with no additional cost. If you're interested in trying out BetterHelp, you can click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com sun, which yes, supports this channel, but also gets you 10% off your first month on BetterHelp. Gay therapy. I never really got the university experience most people get. I went to university in my hometown, I've always lived at home, and I spent my first two and a half years of it on Zoom. It's not better or worse, it's just different, and I don't regret it, because I love my life now and I don't think I'd be where I am if I chose differently. I never really went out. I never really made friends. I never shared a dorm or was invited to a Halloween party or Secret Santa. I hung out a lot with my mom though. I spent a lot of time with my family and saved a lot of money. I also, you know, started my own YouTube channel and somehow got to meet the most incredible creators and experience such a cool life. I did a lot of soul searching and got super good at being my own best friend. I find that solitude actually gave me the space I needed to grow and I may have had a little bit of a lonely past couple of years but they were pretty full. On my way to school there's like this weird registration thing I have to do for an hour. We got the essentials. Hello Kitty. Toilet paper, of course. They look like... Ooh, they look like little peas. <laughs> this oh, is gone. I used to question all the time if I made the right decision, you know, by living with my parents and not actively searching for friends or pursuing a more conventional career path. Thank you! And my intrusive thoughts have tried to convince me that I'd never make friends. I'd regret all of it. I was wasting my youth and I'd fail and fall behind. I think it's so important to remember that there's no right way to spend your time. Everyone's timeline is different and the choices you make don't have to make sense to anyone else. And at the end of the day, you still have plenty of time and plenty of chances in your life to fill it up and change your mind. I can't believe I met two friends today. I'm feeling like a social butterfly. I honestly feel kind of relieved because I didn't think I was going to meet anyone. It's hard to make friends. I got really lucky today. Okay. What? A little bit of... What am I pressing? It's preset. Is it gonna work? What the f Wait, what? Oh! Oh my god. I think it's working. Shaking. It's a little daunting to think about where home is going to be next. Like that is just such an adult thought to have. And it is such a privilege to be able to choose where I want to call home, but the world is also quite big, so it's making me feel a little lost as well. Yes, it's a great problem to have, I'm fully aware of that, but it's also a big, scary, overwhelming, life-changing one too. You know, we could all choose so many different lives and dreams and passions that I end up choosing none of them. There are so many possibilities, but everything feels impossible. One of my favorite hawker centers, maybe my favorite hawker center in Singapore. At the same time, sometimes I want a big important job in the city, and other times I want a quiet, 
peaceful life. I love being single, but I also feel like I should be actively looking for someone. I have no idea if anything I'm thinking or doing or feeling makes sense. I feel young and old and old and young and like I have so much time and I'm running out of it all at the same time. This dangerously delicious. I feel dumb. I feel so dumb all the time. They say not to worry. But what about my career, my happiness, my finances, my friends, my family, my dog, my goals, my interests, my well-being, my health, my books? <laughs> Along with eating, sweating, baking, and reading, I think you can maybe probably tell worrying is one of my favorite pastimes. Let's see how this puny, expensive apple tastes. Fruit in Singapore is too expensive. What? What the f I grew up cutting coupons with my mom, so I think that's where it comes from. Gala apple. Not the best, but not the worst. I'm gonna savor her. Some of our exchange students who told me that they, they walk around all night. I don't know what they do, but... Uh, <laughs> As someone who's on a very non-traditional career path, who was once on one of the most common paths, one of the hardest things I've had to do was to just believe in myself. No one is going to tell me what to do. No one else has gone through exactly what it is I'm going through, and it's easy to look at what others are doing and doubt yourself. Especially here, when everyone seems to have an answer to the question, where are you going to work? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna get there? But you are not the others. You don't want what they want, so you can't be doing the same things that they're doing. It's hard to keep going when you're the only person you know on the journey, but your intuition has gotten you this far and it will only keep bringing you further. You just have to allow it to. Most days I feel like I'm going nowhere or backwards or in circles or sideways, but every time I take the time to look back, I'm always further and further than where I had been and I'm okay and I'm on the right track. It's just hard to believe it sometimes. Yeah. Holy math genius over here. <laughs> It's hard to just trust your process, but worrying won't magically give me the answers. Maybe we're supposed to just let life unfold in all the ways it does. Maybe all we can do is hang on for the ride, put ourselves out there and be open to meeting new people and slowly meet ourselves too, where we are. Do the self-work and learn to let go of what is bad for us so we can make room for what is good for us. Worrying won't change a thing, but it really does take away from living. And so if that's the case, shouldn't we just try to enjoy where we are now? You're not lost. You just finally have a chance to explore yourself without being tied to a specific outcome. And that is kind of really exciting. Um, this is a project I've been working on. While I'm on this hunt for where to call home next, in the meantime, I've been trying to learn how to make a home in myself learning to make my mind a safe place to retreat to in hard times, focusing on my breathing when life overwhelms me, being able to find peace, regardless of how chaotic the outside world may be. Hyping myself up, because I've seen myself get through some tough mental stuff and I know I can do it again. Focusing on happiness and health over productivity and paychecks, doing lots of solo dates, having fun alone. So no matter where in the world I end up, I am always home. The weather is actually cooperating today. Singapore is one of the reasons I have to believe something like fate exists. I have this theory, okay, that Singapore and I are soulmates. It's a beautiful day and it's not even humid. If we backtrack to a year ago, I was actually also in Singapore ending off my Southeast Asia solo traveling adventures and there was just something about Singapore. I felt so welcomed and grounded and comfortable and at peace. Like, I kind of just belonged. You know how home is supposed to make you feel? That's what it felt like. And I never felt that in Canada where I grew up. And I remember thinking to myself, it would be a dream to be able to live here a little longer. And a few weeks later, I was asked to go on a brand trip in Singapore, which happened to be one of the most unreal weeks of my life. I was also pretty certain at that point that I was not going back to finish my degree until I saw that I could do a semester abroad. There were no more spots in Singapore, but at the very last minute, someone dropped out and Singapore and I got matched. 
one year ago, I felt so lost and desperately unhappy and needed change. And when I got to Singapore, something changed. I know it sounds a little cuckoo, but I felt this weird connection, this energy and excitement and found myself wishing I could live here. And now I'm doing exactly that. It's funny how life works out that way. I swear, you are finding your way without even realizing it. I just spent all day talking to people, tired. It was so much fun, it was so much fun. Some of you guys even recognized me. People of you came up to me and it was so surreal. But I've just been sitting here doing a little bit of editing and having a little bit of quiet alone time because I need to take care of my introvert's brain. <laughs> no, I'm really lucky. Like, I've met some really, really good people. Everyone is like trying to be friends with everyone. I'm worried that they're gonna meet someone better than me and then like just leave me. I'm pretty good at being alone. Like, if they don't want to be friends with me, that's fine. Like, I can still have fun by myself. Studying abroad and any huge life changes are weird because you know it's going to absolutely turn your life upside down and you're about to grow so much and nothing's going to be the same in a year and you know you're going to be okay, but you also don't feel okay. It's weird. I've begged for a change for so long and I'm so excited to be here and living this dream of mine, but I also can't lie, I'm freaking out for what's about to happen. I have no friends. I came alone. I have no freaking idea how this is gonna play out, but maybe that's the point? I guess that's just life. Maybe you find your soulmate, maybe you find yourself. I hate carrots. <laughs> Buys. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. Maybe you meet your best friend or just have a couple conversations. Or maybe it doesn't change your life. Maybe you're here for a short time or a long time or just a fun time. Maybe it's just another experience. You know, another page, another chapter. Or maybe it is the turning point before everything is about to change in your story. Taste test. Chips more. Chips more. Yeah. But how are you going to keep the <laughs> oh, they're like not the color I expected them to be. Oh, they're not the texture. They're not very good. Like really thin and crispy. They're kind of, they kind of taste stale. They're not the worst. A cracker cookie. I give it a six out of ten. Not the worst. Five out of ten. <laughs> it's edible. The, the chocolate's Ever. good. It's real. Best for last. <laughs> we only have two. <laughs> Peach, red. No! Pringles. Garlic prawn Pringles. Pringle, Pringle guy, guy looks like he is struggling. Yeah, he's on fire. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, it's got a pig. Yeah, they. It's not like a That's amazing change. <laughs> but it's not that spicy. But. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, for the record, it's 2 a.m. Yeah. For you. Oh no. <laughs> you know, honestly, not bad. It tastes like the thing where you dip the stick in like the onions. Yeah. Yeah. The sweet and salty is kind of good. I don't taste the cheese. I don't think there's cheese in it. What is that little man? Where's the ingredients? Mmm. <laughs> there's cheese. <laughs> the cheese is like after food additives. A little tiny bit of cheese. Coming into exchange, other than being absolutely the happiest person alive to be in Singapore again, 
I tried to come with no expectations. I wanted to focus mainly on just being open to new experiences and opinions and to explore more of the world, to prioritize real connections and genuine conversations, whether they are five minutes or five hours long. I wanted to push my boundaries a little bit, you know, do some crazy things like stay up past 11 and eat peach stuffed Ritz crackers. I wanted to try to make friends, even if it's hard and even if it doesn't work. If you're watching, we love you. Thank you for the potatoes. So far, it's been a week and I have felt so happy and whole and so incredibly relieved. Sometimes I think that my best days are behind me, that I will never feel this proud or this successful or this happy or this loved or this pretty or alive or see anything more beautiful or feel this connected to another human being again, that nothing will compare. And maybe this is the best it's gonna get. Maybe he was the one, maybe I did choose wrong but I've been proven time and time again that that is simply not true. In what world is this a burger? You will feel it again. It may be different, but it will be amazing. Someone will understand you again. You may have to wait a little and learn to lean on yourself in the meantime, but your people are out there. You will find joy in creating again, without pressure, without expectation. For you. Maybe you can never recreate the chemistry you had with that person, but you will have an even stronger bond with another. Good days are never too far away. And while we wait, please learn to enjoy your life. Go and live it in all the ways you've always wanted. Try new things and meet new people and eat yummy food and move to that new place or rebuild a life for yourself right where you are. Make the decision that this life can be beautiful all on your own however you choose to live it. Okay, so I wasn't gonna film this because I eat an apple every morning. But look at the size of this apple. She's massive. I hope she's good because she was not affordable. It's a very bougie apple. Okay, I also fully lost my voice from that night out. This is why I don't go out. I go out like once every year. So that was um, my one time going out in 2024. So she's also like thick, thick apple. I walked around for a while, not really knowing what I wanted to eat, and then I saw this and I was like, yes. I don't know why I just like crave these vermicelli noodles, they're so good. If you couldn't tell by now, I'm a very sentimental person. I have a lot of strong emotions, okay? And there is just something so intensely emotional and mind-boggling about moving away from everyone and everything that you're familiar with to basically begin a new life. It's almost as if you're walking away from everything that's helped define you for two decades and beginning something that will mold you into a complete stranger that you were always meant to be. And while some part of you knows it's gonna be good for you, a part of your heart screams, stay. stay here, stay as you are, stay in your comfort zone, and you already know you're gonna be so exhausted and lonely and challenged in ways that you can't even understand right now, and that's scary, knowing that you're gonna fail at a ton of things, and that you're gonna miss how things used to be. You're gonna find you took a lot of things for granted. Your bed at home, your stocked fridge, a working washing machine. You will find that adulting and independence is not all the YouTube videos and movies make it out to be. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. The scarf filled cream cookies. We can resist. You'll find yourself missing your old room, your old friends, and your old worries. Ooh. You'll find that no yoga studio compares to the one back at home. No restaurant can replicate the taste of mom's cooking. But you'll also find yourself having some really cool conversations. You'll find yourself in crazy corners of the world, feeling more capable and resilient. It'll take some searching, but you'll find your favorite restaurant and find yourself learning the names of the streets. You'll find good people really do exist. You'll end up finding that the world is just so much bigger and more beautiful and delicious when controlling food is not all your world is. I've found I like oatmeal cappuccinos and that it's quite therapeutic to do laundry and that everyone is also kind of afraid of what the future holds, of fitting in and finding themselves. Everyone really is just trying their best and I want to applaud you for that. So far, I've found a lot and I can't wait to find out more.